Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Lexington. Wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome here. I really hope that I am. my whole head is not filling up this camera space. <laughs> That's exactly what happened last week, and I apologize. I'm sure it must have been something I did, I guess, on <coughs> excuse me, my end of things. <coughs> excuse me. Um, anyway, I'm back, um, and I'll explain a little bit about that in a few moments. Uh, Facebook is at it once again and will not allow me to publish uh, what the title of my talk is, so I'll speak to that in just a few moments. But the title of the talk is Clearing Out Hell So Heaven Can Reign, and they have just kind of fouled everything up and all the links from what it used to be, so... I really tried hard to put that in there, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I can do it after the fact. All right. Well, good morning. Hope everybody's doing well this morning. I am going to open with a song that's one of my favorites, and it is sung by um, Federated Church of United Church of Christ. They have a CD called Simple Gifts, and I just want to go over the lyrics just real quick with you. Oh, good. At least I'm getting that people are watching. Hi, Karen. All right, it's called Come Build a Church, and once a year at my former church, we would celebrate our anniversary, and we would sing this song to open things up. Hi, Nancy. Glad you're with me. So here are the lyrics. This is the repeat stanza. God of creation, maker of all things, we gather in this place to pray. We do invite you to come now among us. Come and build your church to get today. And here's the, I'm sorry, this is the repeat stanza. Come build a church with soul and spirit. Come build a church of flesh and bone. Hey, Linda and Mac. Uh, come build a church uh, of flesh and bone. We need no tower rising skyward, no house of wood or glass or stone. Come build a church with human frailty. Come build a church of flesh and blood. Spirit shall be its sure foundation. It shall be built by the hand of God. And then it goes on. Let us see the tongues of fire. Let us hear the great wind roar. Let us know the awe and wonder that we've only glimpsed before. Let us feel the strength of passion which can make us laugh and weep. Let us know this great awakening for so long we've been asleep. And then the chorus. And then let us know the love unceasing which alone can loose the bounds reaching out across the chasms, bringing walls of hatred down. Let us taste the sweet communion where the circle never ends. Hold us in the sweet connection, um, turning strangers into friends. So I hope you enjoy it, and let's do it this morning. <laughs> I hope I can find the, the, t the uh, track. I've got to learn how, I've got to get a consult in here to help me know how to do this without fooling with CDs, but anyway.
Oh, wow. <laughs> I knew I would not make it through without crying. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That song just takes me places that are just, um, wow. And it takes, it's so many memories. And I have a congregant, Karen, that's watching. And she said it brought back so many memories. And thank you, Karen. It did for me, too. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> I'm doing my best here to keep it together. I wanted to just to tell you quickly that um, the reason I, uh, I I took ill last Friday, and it was very sudden. It was like Friday night, and by Saturday, I had my throat had almost closed up, and uh, I was just feeling bad all over, and I thought I had COVID again. I really did. I had, thought I had a breakthrough. So, I, of course, I went Sunday morning and got tested. Hi, Wendy. Um, so, anyway, I got tested and I was negative. I just had a really bad cold. And uh, thank God Reverend Megan was available just kind of on the spur of the moment because I don't know what I would have done. Uh, thank you, Reverend Megan, so much. I appreciate it. Okay, well, I digress. So, again, wherever you are on your spiritual path, you're welcome here this morning, and I'm glad you're with me. And I hope there's something that you can take with you after you leave this morning that will help you on your spiritual path, that will help you to live a more conscious, expanded, greater awareness of a life. I mean, I just, that's, that's my prayer for you. All right, just um, uh, some announcements for those of you who are new to us. We're not currently meeting in person, but hope to be able to do sometime in the near future. I'm planning a Zoom meeting on Sunday, November 7th, immediately following our Sunday online service, and I will send you all the details, okay? I'd like us to at least greet one another and have some sense of community because it's been a year and a half since we met. I would like to hear your ideas about meeting in person and community activities. It would really be good to do that. And I really appreciate all of you who have hung in there with us for this year and a half. That's a long time. God bless you for that. So, I'm very grateful. We're very grateful. Our prayer list for today, and by the way, our prayer list is very powerful. We pray for peace and harmony in our community, our nation, and our world, and for divine wisdom and guidance for our national and world leaders. We also pray for all those still being affected adversely by the natural disasters, both nationally and around the world. And we pray for all those still being affected and having transitioned due to the corona virus and for their grieving families and friends as well as our first responders our frontline our essential workers and especially nicole and leslie frontline workers uh i'd start this morning by asking for prayer for Reg reverend megan and her family her mother made her transition this past week and so please hold them all in the light of peace and comfort please pray also for matt and linda's fur baby mandy who I think is doing better. Uh, and then Mac and Susan's fur baby, Shelby. Trish, Steve and his mom, Doris. Baby James. Diane, Lily, Joanne, Joe, Pat, Alicia, Karen, Grace, Maya, who's Deborah's fur baby. And then pl please pray for Wendy and her daughter, Michelle, and Wendy's grandchildren, Madison, Michael, Braden, David, Joshua, and Caleb. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your prayers for myself and others. It really has helped me so much. I have really been dealing with post-COVID syndrome. I'm what they call a long hauler, and that has been hard. But it is looking better every day. Um, so, And we're so honored to, sh to support you in prayer and shared intention because it is very powerful. We have miracles continue to happen. We prayed for my sister every week for probably six or eight months, and she is completely free of cancer now, colon cancer. I mean, God love her. It's just so wonderful. I uh, thank you, everyone who's supporting us. If you go to our public Facebook page uh, under About, there's our address if you want to mail in a donation. Um, otherwise, I think if you're a member of the Unity Lexington Discussion Group, you can hit the Shop Now button or, or one or both of our pages, and then I'll take you to PayPal. So... Thank you. If you have any trouble with your donations, please let me know because we are building our reserves to go and meet in person because we're going to have a big shindig when we meet in person. We're going to have a band. 
you know, it'd be great to have one every week. So we're building up our reserves right now for all of that. Thank you, God. All right. Daily Word. I chose one from September 22nd, which is, of course, gone. And the word for today is lighthearted. The affirmation for today is, I have a cheerful outlook and lighthearted spirit. Like sunlight, sunlight breaking through the clouds, lighthearted moments break through any boredom or tension. I may be feeling to bring a lilt to my day. My cheerful, cheerful outlook amplifies appreciation of blessings large and small. I notice wonders of happiness, beauty, and insight that build my memories throughout the day. It may be hearing my favorite songs, or seeing a beautiful bird in flight, or sharing a delicious meal with family and friends. All of those, yeah. The tone of my day reflects my inner world. I commit to light-hearted living and hold fast to my faith that God is expressing through me and everyone. I encounter beauty, grace, and ease everywhere I go. With ever-deepening trust, I am free to smile, laugh, and enjoy being lighthearted. So important. All right, the scripture for today is taken from Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13. A glad heart makes a cheerful countenance, which makes me... <laughs> Reminds me of something somebody once said about, if you're happy, be sure to notify your face. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well, we're going to have our meditation this morning. And um, you might want to just close your outer eyes. And some people like to do open eye meditations. For me, I prefer to... Okay, let's see if we can get this right here. I prefer to close my eyes, but that's just me. So we're playing Pete Peterson's CD this morning. Hi, Pete, wherever you are. Love that man. All right. Well, just take a nice deep cleansing breath. We are going to take just a few moments to get in touch with that power and that presence that is within us. of God. So just breathe it in. And let's just remember together this morning that there's no power greater than the power of God active in our lives and in this universe. It may seem like it at times, but that's not the truth of God's law. God is powerful and omnipotent. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful for the power of God when it comes to our health. We're so grateful for the power of God when it comes to our relationships, our finances, our creativity and work, ways of expressing ourselves. Wow. That power of God is incredibly expansive, so expansive that our minds can't really absorb the idea of an all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipotent God, the God of our being. I just invite you now to breathe in this beautiful divine idea that God is all powerful in our lives and that of others. God is all powerful throughout the universe. So just give yourself a few moments to breathe that in. Breathe that into your heart space. You might feel a tingling, you might feel a warmth, you may see a brightness within your consciousness. You may feel it at the depths of your being. And then you may just feel a peace come over you because you are affirming that God is all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere present. That gives us strength. 
that gives us power. The truth of who we are as God's creation, of who we are as spiritual beings walking in this physical world. I just invite you for a few moments in the silence, if you're going through any difficulty in your life right now, to allow the Holy Spirit to do its healing work within you in these moments, these quiet moments. So breathe in God and whatever it is that you are struggling with, let it go and hand it to God. You may want to even picture yourself actually handing it into the hands of God. Remember the song we listened to this morning, the church shall be built by the hand of God. See the hand of God and your challenge, place your challenge within that hand of God. Let's do that together in the silence this morning and allow the Holy Spirit to do its work within you in a few moments of silence. to God now. Don't try to take it back. Let go. Let God. Give it to God. And every time a fear thought comes, say to yourself, God takes care of me. Or if you're fearful about someone else, God takes care of whomever. God takes care of me. God takes care of us. That is the truth. That is the truth. That is God's law. Ooh, nice deep breath. Nice deep breath. I invite you now to come back to this time and place. But remember, God takes care of us, for there is no power in this universe greater than the power of God in my life, in yours, in this universe. So it is. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah, oh gosh. I don't know about you. Meditation always makes me feel so good. <laughs> makes me feel lighter and airier. I don't know how else to explain it. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> mm. Okay. Let's see. All right. I, as I said, I don't know what's going on with Facebook. I, I have a, a tech consultant that I need to get in touch with this week, and I need to write myself a note to do that, and I'm going to do it right now because if I don't, I'll forget and I'll get him to help me uh, find out what in the world is going on. And please tell me, I'm looking into my camera, and it's the usual scene here with me, with my painting in the background and my candles. But if you're seeing my head as big as a pumpkin, let me know, okay? I'm really hoping um, that it's okay this week. Um, and it could be pilot error. I don't know, but I'm blaming it <laughs> I'm going to talk about blame in a few minutes. <laughs> but I'm really wondering if it's not to do with Facebook. Okay. Now, I hope I don't run too far behind today. And if I do, um, I put the songs at the beginning and the end. And, and then the song at the end, if you don't want to hang in there and you got things you need to go and do. Because we do say that, generally speaking, we spend about 40 minutes together. But it may be longer today because I had an awful lot of material that I, I recorded and I don't know I'll do what I can anyway usually I start with a funny but the funnies are within my talk today so I didn't forget about it as above so below be ye of this world 
Be ye in this world, but not of this world. Be ye in this world, but not of this world. These are really wonderful biblical quotes that are well known. And the question today is, what do they really mean for us personally? In our own lives. You know, this stuff is what? 25,000 years old, it's like, I mean, 2,500 years old, whatever. It's like, how does that have relevance for me today in the 21st century? All right, from a spiritual standpoint, they are interpreted to mean, these two quotes I just spoke, bringing heavenly ideas, higher truths, and deep and profound spiritual concepts into our earthly, worldly experience so that these everyday experiences with all the fallout, and that's a good word, that can accompany them, are transmuted into heavenly ones. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right. A youth Sunday school teacher was giving a lesson one Sunday morning to a group of grade school children when she asked them, if I sold my house and my car, had a big garage sale, and gave all my money to the church, would that get me into heaven? No, the children emphatically answered. How about if I cleaned the church every day, mowed the yard, and kept everything neat and tidy? Would that get me into heaven? Again, the answer was no. Well, then, if I were kind to animals and gave candy to all the children and helped the needy, would that get me into heaven? She asked them again. Again, they all answered no. So, she said, how can I get into heaven? With that, little Johnny shouted out, You gotta be dead. <laughs> now, in unity, we do not think you gotta be dead in order to get in heaven because heaven is not, in unity, this is what we believe, heaven is not a geographical place we get to through the physical act of dying. However, we believe that in order to experience the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, which is a conscious connection to the God within, we do need to let some things die. In other words, we need to let go of that which does not allow us in consciousness to experience the kingdom of heaven. All right, here's another story for you. A five-year-old named Rachel her brother and her godfather were making an afternoon drive when she got the hiccups. Everyone in the car is from the south, the deep south, and speak accordingly. So just imagine the southern drawl. Rachel's godfather, trying to help her get rid of the hiccups, said, Rachel, inhale and exhale real slow. And Rachel just looked at him, thinking she might not have understood he asked, do you know what inhale and exhale means? Sort of, Rachel answered. Inhale means you're far away from God and you're never going to get to see him. <laughs> inhale. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, it's good to laugh because I've heard that if you suppress laughter, it goes to your hips. So, you know, laugh. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> be light-hearted. Oh, my goodness. It makes life so much more bearable. At least it does for me. I will say that. In his book, our co-founder of the Unity Movement, Charles Fillmore, writes, Your being is in heaven, the spiritual consciousness. You descended from that high estate. You belong there now. You are there now if you will but realize it and will but comply with the laws of heaven. The word realize is key because it informs us that we must do all we can to make God real in our lives. That's what it means by God realization, making God real in our lives. And this is something that we talk about often in unity, often. But primarily, we must recognize and release Whatever keeps us from complying and cooperating with the laws of the kingdom of heaven. To put it bluntly, the title of my talk is, We Must Clear Out Hell So Heaven Can Reign. Here's a story that was often told by Eknoth Iswaran. Oh, gosh. 
Yes, he's a, a Middle Eastern modern mystic spiritual teacher and author from India. And this illustrates exactly what we need to do. In ancient India lived a sculptor renowned for his life-size statues of elephants with trunks curled high, tusks thrust forward, thick legs trampling the earth. Those carved beasts seemed to trumpet to the sky. One day, a king came to see these magnificent works and to commission a statue for his palace. Struck with wonder, he asked the sculptor, what is the secret of your artistry? The sculptor quietly took measure of the monarch and then, and then replied, Great king, when, with the aid of many men, I quarry a gigantic piece of granite from the banks of the river, I have it set here in my courtyard. For a long time, I do nothing but observe this block of stone and study it from every angle. I focus all my concentration on this task and won't allow anything or anyone to disturb me. And at first I see nothing but a huge and shapeless rock sitting there, meaningless, indifferent to my purposes, utterly out of place. In fact, it seems almost resentful at having been dragged from its cool place by the rushing waters. But then slowly, very slowly, I begin to notice something in the substance of the rock. I have a premonition an outline barely discernible. It begins to show itself to me. I watch with an open eye and a joyous, eager heart. The outline grows stronger. Oh, yes, I can see it. An elephant is stirring in there. Only then do I start my work. For days flowing into weeks, I use my chisel and mallet, always clinging to my sense of that outline, which grows ever stronger. How the big fellow strains, how he yearns to be out, how he wants to live. It seems so clear now, for I know the one thing that I must do. With an utter singleness of purpose, I must chip away every last bit of stone that is not elephant. What then remains will be, must be, the elephant. Wow. I'm sure probably every sculptor recognizes that process of creativity, I would think, I would imagine. I know for myself, I paint and draw, and I start with a blank canvas. That's the hardest part. But I do have an image, and that image keeps coming stronger and stronger and stronger as I put the brush to the canvas. And it just has a life of its own. It's just really wonderful. Okay, in his book, Talks on Truth, Co-founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore writes, oh, I'm sorry, I already did that. <laughs> okay, my bad. All right, the key phrase in this illustration is this. With an utter singleness of purpose, I must chip away every last bit of stone that is not elephant. So guys, that is our task. With an utter singleness of purpose, we need to chip away at everything that is not heaven. With an utter singleness of purpose, we need to clear out hell so that heaven which is within us can reign. I want to share a quote with you from Pope John Paul, who of course has gone on, got his angel wings. When I first came across this article, it was uh, one that appeared in, the, in a Tucson, Arizona newspaper many years ago. And this is a quote. Here's what he said. Heaven is neither an abstraction nor a physical place in the clouds, but a living and personal relationship of union with the Holy Trinity. Wow. I grew up Catholic. That wasn't what they told me. Whoa. That's phenomenal. So, you know, unity is not the only ones that don't believe that Heaven is a geographical place you go to through the physical act of dying. They understand and know in many religions that heaven is a state of consciousness, as is hell. So here's another quote from that same article. Hell is not a punishment imposed externally by God. Really? That isn't what I was taught. But the condition resulting from attitudes and actions which people adopt in this life. 
Let me phrase it again. It is the condition resulting from attitudes and actions which people adopt in this life. More than a physical place, hell is the state of those who freely and definitively separate themselves from God, the source of all life and joy. Well, as I said, I, I was shocked. This was many years ago when I read this, but I was totally shocked because this is the complete opposite of what I'd been told. All right. So I described to, to the people I sent the email to and sent meetup description to that there are two ways in which we experience the hell of separation from the source of all life and joy, which is God. And there are two blocks that if we were to chisel them away, clear them out, heaven as a state of consciousness would reign more freely in our lives. And these two blocks are fear and blame. Yeah, fear and blame. Let go of fear. It's said that there's really only two emotions, love and fear. Marianne Williamson says, love in your mind produces love in your life. This is the meaning of heaven. Fear in your mind produces fear in your life. This is the meaning of hell. Whoa, yes. Now, there's several acronyms out there for fear of false evidence appearing real. I like that one. Another one is fear everything and run. And then about three weeks ago, we talked about another acronym for uh, uh, greeting change in our life. And when we experience fear, we just change it into feeling excited and ready. <laughs> That's the one I really like. All right. So, the other idea I want to mention is this. All of what I'm talking about boils down to making a decision. The word decision is taken from the root word. Um, I had it written down somewhere. Um, well, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, it, it, it has to do, oh, decise. It's the root word is decise, D-E-C-I-S-E. -E. It means to cut away. Decise means to cut away, to make a decision, just to cut away. You're cutting away everything that is not like what you're deciding for. You're, you're looking for the elephant. Yes. So the word decision is taken from the root word decise, and it means to cut away. So when we make a decision, we cut out everything, our thoughts, words, and actions that are unlike that decision, that intention. There's another anonymous quote out there that we may encounter 100 shadows, 99 are of which our own making. Now, there's a guy named Barry Glasner who's a sociologist, and he wrote a book, Culture of Fear. Um, I read it many, many years ago, but he indicates we are the most worried, scared culture ever. He states that even though we've increased our life expectancy beyond what we ever thought we could, we've doubled it, even though we're able to cure more diseases, even though that no group of human beings on earth has ever been this healthy, at the same time, no group has ever been more worried about their health. It's been said that you can't let fear run your life because if you do, it will rob you of your life. If we let fear run our life, we are consciously, we are not consciously creating heaven on earth. We're blocking ourselves from being the opening for heaven to be realized on this earth. So ask yourself these questions and I'll run through them pretty quickly because I think we're running behind on time. How is fear preventing me from living? How is it preventing me from creating and being the opening for heaven on earth right here, right now? Is, is it fear of not being safe? Is it fear of not having enough? Is it a fear of connecting with others? Am I afraid to let love in? Am I afraid to speak my truth? Am I afraid to shine my life? And the list is endless. I think we'd all agree it's time to wipe all that stuff out, no matter what it is, so that heaven can reign and be realized in our lives. Yes. All right. The last two lines of a prayer written by Hannah, Hannah Cohouse, a favorite of unity. God is my all. I know no fear. For God and love and truth are here. Wow. Simply making these two or this, this, yeah, these two short statements in the face of fear, it will go a long way to clearing a little bit of hell out so heaven can reign. 
This is the way to deal with fear, by taking just one small, tiny step in faith. Taking one step in faith toward the thing we fear will set it into a motion of a spiritual dynamic that is extremely powerful, and we will begin to see God's power at work in our lives. The kind of power I talked about or mentioned, covered in my meditation, however you want to put that. All right. Number two block to creating heaven on earth is another biggie, blame. Blame. Just as there are two primary emotions, there are two ways we can show up in life. We can show up as blaming or taking responsibility. It's our choice. Wow. Yeah. When we blame, we become a victim. And really, the word blame has two syllables in it. Be lame. Be lame. However, when we take responsibility, we become empowered. Whenever we look outside ourselves and take a finger and point and say the problem is him, her, the system, the organization, whatever, we're shooting at the wrong target. Too often we try to change outer things instead of changing the inner. We rant and protest about the screen of life and that which is showing up on the screen of life instead of the projector so nothing changes. Here's a story. The movies came to the big cities first and finally and they arrived in a remote mining camp in the Rockies. The picture was announced, and the tent was put up. Now, they're seeing movies for the first time. The residents had never been to a movie before. The tent was packed with cowboys and miners, and at a given moment, during the showing of a blood-curdling melodrama, the villain began to choke the heroine. A cowboy in the front row pulled out his gun and fired six shots into the villain on the screen. Everyone laughed because in those days, a gunshot didn't mean much. There were only a few bullet holes in the screen, and of course, the picture just went on as scheduled. So, why is that so funny? Because the cowboy did not have an accurate and full understanding of how the picture is projected onto the screen by the projector. Yes, up on the screen. If he had turned around and fired at the projector, it would have stopped the show. So, if we don't like the picture of our life that's being shown up on the screen of life, we need to change the real. And where is that? In the projector. In our own consciousness. Only then will we have a change. There are so many souls who, while with us on earth, created an opening for heaven to come through them. And we have that same call. Believe it or not, we do. We might not think so. They did not blame their circumstances on others. Some examples, Mohammed, Mozart, Thomas Edison, Moses, Jesus, Mother Teresa. You may be thinking, well, these are the chosen few. No, the greatest of them promised that we could do even greater things than they did. These souls did not touch a power that only they had. They touched a power that we all have within. Each of these examples chose to take responsibility versus laying blame. So what are we allow how are we allowing blame to block us from creating heaven on earth? How is it holding us back? Now is the time for us to release it, to take complete and full responsibility for our experience and to create the heavening for he the opening for heaven on earth. Wow, being the opening for heaven on earth takes a radical decision and commitment to another way of being. A mental response to life that may be at odds with the way we've been showing up in the past, which is a good thing. The decision to release fear and blame has to be made. We must clear out these hell thoughts and allow thoughts of heaven to permeate and reign. Course in Miracles says... In this world, you can become a spotless mirror in which the holiness of your creator shines forth through you to all around you. You can reflect heaven here. Could you but realize for a single instant the power of healing that the reflection of God shining in you can bring to all the world? You could not wait to make the mirror of your mind clean to receive the image of the holiness that will heal the world. Wow. 
The world is plastic to our thinking, and it will be heaven or hell according to our own thinking, our own consciousness. And when we behold God in here and behold God out there, we will heal the world. That's something that Neil Donald Walsh talked about in Conversations with God. He said, you're here to heal the room, the space, the world. That's why we came here, to help heal the world, the space. It's the truth of who we are. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's talk. I really enjoyed being back with you. And just affirm with me that all post-COVID symptoms have vanished back into the nothingness from which they came. That's my affirmation for myself. Please join me in that affirmation. Oh, my goodness. Um, all right, well, let's say the prayer for protection with one another. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us and wherever we are. God is and all is well because we are one with God. We are one with one another and all is well. All right. Well, this last song that I chose, and if you want to um, leave, I understand because I may be running over. I think I am already five minutes. Um, this is what I call a spiritual mantra. And this is by Ricky Byers, who used to be with Agape International Center of Truth out in uh, Beverly Hills now. So she, um, she, these are, this is typical, the kinds of songs that she wrote. And uh, this is called, I think, Let, We Let, We Let. So I'll just tell you how this mantra goes because you may want to sing it to yourself. We let the love wash over us. And then she does that several times. We let, we let it be. And then she goes on, they sing, we, the choir sings, we let the joy wash over us. We let the peace wash over us. And then finally, we let the grace wash wash over us, and then back to we let the love wash over us. So I hope you enjoy this um, really wonderful song. Let's see if I can find the right track. All right. Yeah, Ricky Byers. I think she doesn't go back with anymore because she and her husband are divorced, but, and she's on her own. I think she has a Facebook page. She may even have a website. B-Y-A-R-S, Ricky. Yeah. I hope you enjoy it. See you next week if you have to leave. Love you.
woman can write music now, can she not? <laughs> we let the love, we let the joy, we let the peace, we let the grace wash over us. <sighs> I just feel like I've been under a rainbow waterfall, just picturing all those wonderful things washing over me. I hope you did too. Well, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. And... Um, I don't know what I'm going to be talking about next week. I mean, if there's ever anything that you all want me to, to speak about, I'll do my best to see if I can do that. So just, you know, send me a note on Facebook or send me an email or call me or something. So I'm, I'm happy to do it. Well, I'm just so glad I'm back and I'm planning and visioning that I will be here next Sunday. I love you all. Bottom of my heart. Have a wonderful week. Bye.